ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय Bhagavad Gita as it is, chapter 9, the most confidential knowledge, text number 1. Shri Bhagavan Vacha, idam tu te guyatamam, pravaksham yana shu yave, yana vigyana sahitam, yash gyatva moksha se shubhad, Shri Bhagavan Vacha Idam tu te guyatamam Pravaksham yana suyave Jnana vijnana sahitam Yajgyatva moksha se shubha Shri Bhagavan Vacha Idam tu te guyatamam Pravaksham yanu shuyave Jnana vijnana sahitam Yajgyatva moksha se shubhat Shri Bhagavan vacha Idam tu te guyatamam प्रभाक्षा मानु सुयवे Jnana Vigyana Saitam Yajkyatva Moksha Seshubha Shri Bhagavan Vacha Supreme Personality of God had said Idam this to but te unto you Guyatamam the most confidential. Pravakshami, I am speaking. Anusuyave, to the non-envious. Jnanam, knowledge. Vijnana, realized knowledge. Saitam, with. Yat, which. Gyatva, knowing. Moksha say, you will be released. Ashubhat, from this miserable material existence. Translation and purport by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Shri Prabhupada. Supreme Personality of God has said, My dear Arjuna, because you are never envious of me, I shall impart to you this most confidential knowledge and realization knowing which you shall be relieved of the miseries of material existence. Purport. As a devotee hears more and more about the Supreme Lord, he becomes enlightened. This hearing process is recommended in the Shemad Bhagavatam. The messages of the Supreme Personality of Godhead are full of potencies, and these potencies can be realized if topics regarding the Supreme Godhead are discussed amongst devotees. This cannot be achieved by the association of mental speculators or academic scholars for his realized knowledge. Devotees are constantly engaged in the Supreme Lord's service. The Lord understands the mentality and sincerity of a particular living entity who is engaged in Krishna consciousness and gives him the intelligence to understand the science of Krishna in the association of devotees. Discussion of Krishna is very potent and if a fortunate person has such association and tries to assimilate this know- the knowledge, then he will surely make advancement towards spiritual realization. Lord Krishna, in order to encourage Arjuna to higher and higher elevation in his potent service, describes in this ninth, ninth chapter matters more confidential than any he has already disclosed. The very beginning of Bhagavad Gita, the fifth chapter, the first chapter, 
is more or less an introduction to the rest of, this, of the book. The second and third chapters, the spiritual knowledge described is called confidential. Topics described in this discussed, the seventh and eighth chapter is specifically related to devotional service, and because they bring enlightenment in Krishna consciousness, they call it more confidential. But the matters which are described in the ninth chapter deal with unalloyed pure devotion. Therefore, this is the most confidential. One who is situated in the most confidential knowledge of Krishna is naturally transcendental. He therefore has no material pangs, although he is in the material world. In the Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, it is said, although one who has a sincere desire to render loving service to the Supreme Lord is situated in the conditional state of material existence, he is to be considered liberated. Similarly, we shall find in the Bhagavad Gita, 10th chapter, that anyone who is engaged in that way is a liberated person. Now this first verse finds specific significance. The words, idam jnanam, this knowledge, refer to pure devotional service, which consists of nine different activities. Hearing, chanting, remembering, serving, worshiping, praying, obeying, maintaining friendship, and surrendering everything. By the practice of these nine elements of devotional service, one is elevated to the spiritual consciousness, Krishna consciousness. When one's heart is thus cleared of material contamination, one can understand the science of Krishna. Simply to understand that a living entity is not material is not sufficient. That may be the beginning of spiritual realization. One should recognize the difference between activities of the body and the spiritual activities of one who understands that it is not the body. Seventh chapter we have dis- already discussed the opulent potency of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, his different energies, the inferior and superior natures, and all this material manifestation. Now in the ch- chapter 9, the glories of the Lord will be de- delineated. The Sanskrit word anusuyave in this verse is also very significant. Generally, the commentators, even if they are highly scholarly, are all envious of Krishna, the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Even the most erudite scholars wrote on Bhagavad Gita very inaccurately because they're envious of Krishna. The commentaries are useless. The commentaries given by the devotees of the Lord are bona fide. No one can explain Bhagavad Gita or give perfect knowledge of Krishna if he is envious. One who criticizes the character of Krishna without knowing him is a fool. So such commentaries should be very carefully avoided. One who understands that Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead, pure and transcendental personality, these chapters will be very beneficial. Shri Bhagavan Vacha idam tu ke idam tu te guyatamam pravaksham anu shu yave jnana viganam sahitam kyaj gyatva moksha se shubhat. Supreme Personality of Godhead said, My dear Arjuna, because you are never envious of me, I shall impart to you this most confidential knowledge and realization on which you shall be relieved of the miseries of material existence. Namo Vishnu Vrayan Krishna Prasthaya Bhutaya Srimate Bhakti Vedanta Swami Tanamane Namaste Saraswati Deve Gauravani Pacharane Nirvishe Shashinivadi Paskatyate Satarane this begins the middle six chapters of the Bhagavad Gita, where the nature of pure devotional service is described. Krishna has, compl- has concluded the sixth chapter in the Bhagavad Gita with, well, because that's the beginning of the seventh chapter. But any, in any case, this is the most essential part of the Bhagavad Gita. It says that there are 10 billion verses in the Vedic literature. And all of them are summarized in the Bhagavad Gita in 700, 700 verses. And of all those verses, the middle six chapters are the most important. And of all those chapters, the ninth chapter is the most important. And of all those verses in the ninth chapter, the verse, Manmana Bhava Man Bhakto Majaji Mamnam is Guru, Mamme Vaishya Si Yukta Atmanam Matrainaha is the most important. 
gauge my mind always in thinking of me, offer, uh, become my devotee, offer your homage unto me, worship me, offer your homage, homage unto me. The result is that you'll come to me without fail. I promise you this because you're my very dear friend. And Prabhupada says here that the most essential element in becoming Krishna conscious is to give up our envious attitude. Of course, we don't think we're envious, we just think we're naturally great, so everyone should appreciate it. And if they don't appreciate what we think is us, namely this body or this mind, which has nothing to really to do with us, but if the people don't appreciate us, who we think we are, our false identity, then we become very disturbed and we blame it on God. Why doesn't he become, why does he arrange things in order to satisfy our false ego? Why is he always trying to create problems for our false ego? He can make it very nice. But Krishna doesn't want to do that. He wants to put anyone who wants to cultivate their false ego into as much difficulty as possible. Not out of enviousness or out of spite, but simply so that the living entity can give up this false endeavor to become something that we're not. To become something that we're not, each, since we've been here since time memorial, at least theoretically, it seems like we've wasted a lot of time. So Krishna doesn't want to waste, have us waste our time. He wants us to utilize it in a productive way. <clears throat> and what is productive? The spiritual world is a production of bliss, loving bliss, eternally, with ever-expanding consciousness, ever-greater appreciation for the loving exchanges between Krishna and his devotees. That's production. Everything else is a waste of time. Because people don't think like that, because that's called delusion. They think the only person is the love of themselves, which is rather, I mean, for the most part. Because, and in order to love themselves and serve themselves, they serve their body. And in order to serve their body, they make alliances. They call it society, friendship, and love. But ultimately, it's all to make sure that ourselves are gratified. But ourselves are never gratified here because it's not possible. There's nothing to gratify except for the senses. The material senses. The soul has also spiritual senses, and they require gratification. But somehow or another, the soul is satisfied, just imitating Radha and Krishna here, and 8,400,000 species of life. And although one never becomes either Radha or Krishna, still one is satisfied simply with the imitation. Because no one is satisfied, especially in Kali Yuga, because Radha is trying to become Krishna, and Krishna is trying to become like Radha. They can't really even figure out their false identities. <laughs> and as I said in America at one time, and it's still counting, they had 86 different genders. You can try and figure it out. That was a while ago. I'm sure they, those genders split up to further subdivisions. <laughs> Therefore, this ninth chapter will help us understand what is the value of pure devotional service. Krishna will say it's the king of knowledge, the most secret of all secrets. It's the purest knowledge, and because it gives direct perception of the self, a realization is everlasting and is joyfully performed. So to be able to directly perceive Krishna there's nothing better that can be achieved. You can become famous, build big bridges, or get a body that will last for 311 trillion, 40 billion years, but that's all insignificant compared to actually meeting Krishna, the source of everything. And if you can't directly meet Krishna, if, at least if you can meet Shmatarani, that would be a good compromise. <laughs> meet the original source of unlimited bliss and love would be quite a good thing to do. 
So that's what we have to become convinced about. So I'll stop there. Thank you. Any questions? Hare Krishna. <clears throat> so, as you mentioned, there are, they were there were eighty six different. Uh, you want to know all what they were? No, no. <laughs> uh, so we can see that um, all these false designations are increasing year after year in society, and still the suffering is also increasing. Yes. But so. Why then we are going still more into it if we see that it's there's called no, ignorance. No result. That's called ignorance. Because p- people have lost their memory. Every day their memory goes down, so they don't remember they didn't get a result from it yesterday. Matter of fact, they don't even know what happened yesterday. So as time goes on, people lose their memory, they, just like a dog, as they said. Dog comes to the table to eat something from the table, and the master smacks him with a newspaper, and he runs away. <laughs> Five minutes later, he's back at the table again because <laughs> he forgot what happened. Many people lost their memory. Therefore, they can watch the same movie again and again because they can't remember what <laughs> what it was about. <laughs> Did we watch this yesterday? I don't know. I can't remember. <laughs> Anything else? Okay. Thank you very much. Going to Raj Bhagavad Gita. Kijai. Shila Prabhupada. Kijai. Gaur Pramananda.